we're starting off May 13th. Just about uh, 16 hours into the day, around 4 o'clock. And it is a very nice day outside, about 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're out for another ride vlog. Oh, this is an occurred almost daily. So. Uh, you'll get the roadblock from now on. So this is going to be part of our normal routine is the roadblock. The first part of the ride is always a little difficult because your eyes have to get adjusted to the wind. So there's a bit of tearing up. And vision impairment. That has to do with the, uh, the water in the eyes. I'm going to have to watch out for, as I'm riding, our bugs. Because now it's bug season, and bugs are going to be on the road. It's part of the reality. Oh. I haven't watched Lionel in a couple of days, or Lionel. See, the I in Greek is pronounced as E. So instead of having Lion, you get Leon. Ooh. Rather strong gust of wind here. Something hit my helmet. That gust. I don't know what. But I can hear it hit. Uh, I still have my ride pants on, but I'm wearing shorts underneath. Took one layer of jacket off, uh, one layer of hoodie off. So the one, the two I'm wearing now are fine. And I've got my new phone with me. Upgraded plan. I've got uh, 30 gigabytes of data now. More than enough. My eyes are clearing. Nose is still a little funny. Hit that bump a little hard. No light so far, making very good time. Looks like I've got a bus up ahead, I think. Or something stopped on the side. We'll deal with that when we get to it. top down. It is that warm outside. It is not Florida warm at 80 degrees, but it is nonetheless warmer than it had been, significantly so. That was a bus. So,
this is what constitutes so far if you've been watching this is my day this is what constitutes my day <laughs> uh, the sleep is broken up is I never get a consistent form of sleep there's always something to be dealt with always something to work with I go. Mm -hmm. As I adjust my mirror, a little off. There we go. Much better. Put my keys in the wrong pocket. I'm very used to the scooter now. I'm at the top of the top of the uh, third gear. And as I said, we're going a lot faster. I still have safety in my mind. There's th things that I have to sort of stop talking and focus on on the road. But uh, other than that, the conversation can go ahead uh, full speed. So we will be having a conversation on the road. Right turn now. more I would want on the scooter are the turn signals. I don't have turn signals. So, it'd be, uh, this is a credit to let people know what I'm doing. Although I do have my, uh, my brake lights. My brake lights are fine. It's just a turn signal. So that, that, that would be the issue. getting an all-season ride out of this. For just a uh, few short months, basically January, February, and March, we're not riding. So three months of the year, so nine months of the year we're riding. It's basically when there's snow on the ground. That's 
side. Mistakes occur. Yeah. Another speed demon. like a lot of old TV shows, and particularly from England. This one was kind of interest interesting, and although it was an older TV series, it looks like it must, must have been done like 1975, uh, but set in the 1800s uh, around the Church of England. of what was going on within the Church of England uh, sort of sort of if you want to mirror or reflect and in some ways parallels that of uh, the Roman Catholic Church and it sort of highlights the point of uh, well it, well, not highlighted, but reinforces an understanding uh, from a, a movie uh, called uh, Monsignor Quixote, uh, a relative, a distant relative of Don Quixote. Now, you have to do a bit of reading in order to understand this or to follow along with the reference. Uh, if you're not uh, sufficiently read, it's a, between, uh, particularly in the older literature, pre- uh, 1950, uh, then these references will kind of be lost on you, but for those of you who do understand, uh, to make it to make it some degree uh, of sort of relativity, and to, uh, or, 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 or some degree understandable, it shows how there is a disconnect between the bureaucracy, the government, and the average person.
average person may take things in a manner that is not necessarily understood or intended by the government in terms of its sense of bureaucracy and its own sense of order. In other words, the order that is sort of expected by a bureaucrat is not necessarily one of the average person. And this is a kind of a difficult thing to understand. Bureaucrats and governments and those interested in government often create a sense of order within their own understanding. In other words, they have not considered or consulted with anyone else other than their own mind. And this is the, the na this is unfortunately the nature of the intellectual is to be in many ways self-absorbed. So that they see only their view as being paramount or being important. Everybody else must sort of, well, give up their view in order to be in with the, uh, we'll call what they consider to be the proper view. And that's their view. of the intellectual is not common or li limited to people who of a particular class anymore. It's now up and down the scale where people have, have when they talk about the sense of proprietary, of, of propriety, I can get the word right there, propriety, uh, their sense of propriety, uh, the properness. They often do so while ignoring uh, the reality around them, and, it, and this is this is true of the reformers back then in the 1800s. A large chunk of the, the social reforms that are going on today, so-called social justice, has its roots all the way back in the 1800s. This is why Dostoevsky was writing about it. It's not something. It's not something that is new. In fact, it's rather something rather old. So this is why Dostoevsky can actually write about it because there is a sense, a, a, a reality that just doesn't connect with any, with, with outside of the, the reality of the intellectual. In other words, the intellectual creates his own reality, and it doesn't matter what the actual reality is around him. He considers only his own reality to be the truth. And so that other people he needs to guide see the truth. And what happens is that this is where, in a court of law, you can have an affidavit which is completely false be true simply because the document is signed and it has to do with how the document is worded. It goes into the syntax. And what happens is that the person reading the, the document, the signs of the document, with one intention, but the purveyor of the document, the person who owns and controls the document, will act in another sense of, of proprietary, or another sense of, well, reality in terms of how they interpret the document, the so-called affidavit in terms of its truth. In other words, there is a limitation on the term affidavit. Well, an affidavit can be signed, but the reality of the affidavit can be completely false. It may only reflect a particular point of view, and that point of view could be could be 
for the purposes of deceit, for the purposes of lying, for the purposes of cheating and stealing, creating a false document. And the number of forgeries, you want to go look at it, the number of forgeries that go on and talk about, oh, this is documented. Well, how do you know that documentation is not a forgery? And the, the history of forgery is a very long one. It is a very long uh, lit, uh, history of forgery. So an affidavit really doesn't mean anything. Other than it's simply an official document. Done it up to 46 kilometers an hour. We just check the speedometer because they're slowing down now. So we're at the top range of the scooter. And that's why we're here in only 11 minutes. And what happens is people exist within the spheres of the government and the spheres of the rather of the different authorities who create their own sense of reality and this is this includes Lionel LeBron of Lionel Nation he creates his own reality and if you watch him long enough you'll begin to realize that that's what exactly what he's doing he's creating his own reality and it's his intellect, his intellectual sense, that creates this reality. And this is true for most academics who create their own, their own sense of reality. And you'll see this with, well within history. And they, of course, they think their sphere of influence is the ultimate, and nothing else before it or after it will be worth anything else. They are the pinnacle. They are the center. They are the reality. And then the longer a person's like that, the more difficult it becomes to shift the focus from the intellectual fantasy something more realistic because the fantasy is preferred to the reality and I think ironically enough in the show what was presented in this, this is from 1975 when this was filmed uh, how the reporters from different papers also fit into this created reality. And they can make, make or break people based on their reporting, not on anything real, but simply on insinuation in terms of how the, and, and how the story, story was written. In other words, the mechanism by which the story was written determined whether the person was guilty or innocent. And usually to sell papers, you have to make a person that's the subject of the paper, of the article, a monster.